It's my pleasure to extend a very warm welcome to all of you who are here this morning. To those of you who may be newcomers in our midst, we are especially glad that you have joined us today and hope that your time here is meaningful. And to our East Link congregation, our faithful uh, congregates from afar, we're glad that you're worshiping with us this morning. Following worship, there is a time of fellowship and refreshment in our uh, gym, and we invite everyone to attend that time. And if you are visiting with us, we would love for you to, serve, to sign rather our guest book and to make yourselves known to Greg or myself or members of the congregation so that we might welcome you. Before I do any other announcements, I want to invite any children and youth who may still be here in the service to make their way right now to the upper hall. Uh, many of the children have gone there directly this morning because this morning is the dress rehearsal in the upper hall for the white gift pageant, which will be presented a week from this morning. And Alma Much is our Pied Piper. She will, and also Nancy uh, Goodwin. So anyone who needs to make their way to the upper hall, please join Alma and Nancy for that now. Thank you. I'll also be leaving just in a few moments to join the children and youth and teachers this morning upstairs. A number of thank yous this morning to Emery Wood, who is going to be lighting our Christ candle and is with us in the chancel this morning, to Barb Stewart, who will be our reader this morning, to Jeannie Campbell and Gordon Worth, who will be sharing a duet a little later in the service, to all of our ushers and the makers of our slides and the clicker, <laughs> to everyone who makes worship possible, and to all of you who were here between last Sunday and this morning to create such magic and beauty in the sanctuary. Thank you so very much. Yes, indeed. The poinsettia that is in our sanctuary this morning has been placed in loving memory of Ian W. Taylor by Mark and Sandra Richardson today. Sympathies of our congregation are extended to the family and friends of Margie Burns and to Donna and Blair McLaughlin on the death of Donna's brother, Beverly. May our prayers and our love surround all those who mourn this day. Birthday wishes are in order this morning for the following for Clive Cudmore, who celebrates a birthday on November 27th, for Eunice Cudmore on November 30th, for Ray Matheson and Sarah Scantleberry, who share a birthday on December 1st, and for Angie Phillips, whose birthday is on December 2nd. We say our heartfelt best wishes to each and every one for happy birthday celebrations in the coming days. As I mentioned a moment ago, a week from this morning, we will celebrate the White Gift Sunday. And those of you who are able are invited to bring a gift of a non-perishable food or a new toy or a new item of clothing. You may wish to wrap your gift in white paper, but doing so isn't mandatory. And your offering will be, see, will be received during worship a week from this morning. This year, White Gift Sunday marks the beginning of the season of Advent, and you will find in your worship bulletins this morning a blue insert that tells of the locations of each of the Prince Street neighborhood Advent worship services in the coming weeks. And of course, those services are always followed by a lovely time of fellowship over lunch. And so we hope that many of you will mark your calendars and plan to attend those services. And in addition to those Advent offerings, we will offer two additional Advent gatherings here at Trinity. The first will be at noon on December 5th. Ellen Locke Duran will present the Advent story in the form of godly play. And then the second gathering will be at noon on December 12th. And through poetry and music and ritual, I will facilitate a gathering for those who wish to come on the 12th. So we hope that many of you will join us on each of those days as well. As always, there are a number of announcements in our bulletins, and I invite you to take note of those. I have been asked to highlight a Celtic Christmas concert, which features Ashley McIsaac and Friends. It will be held here at Trinity on Friday, December 15th at 7.30 p.m. This event is in partnership with the Indian River Festival, which is very exciting. 
And tickets for this concert will be available following worship today and on the next two Sundays at the Richmond Street Door. Tickets will also be available at the Indian River website. So please mark your calendars for that wonderful occasion as well. And finally, two special announcements. I invite uh, Barbara Prouse, Chair of our Council, and Norman Crothers to come forward, each with an announcement. <clears throat> Good morning. Thursday evening, December the 7th, 6.30. It's the night that Presbytery comes to visit. And they come to listen. The purpose of a triennial visit is, is to, for us to discuss who we are as a congregation, our joys and our concerns. It does a couple of things. It ensures presbytery that we are okay, that we're healthy, and gives our council and committees direction as we move into our ministry ahead. The presbytery team is Reverend Jack Spencer, who spent some time with us, I think last winter, and Miss Carolyn Francis. They will meet at a different time with the uh, presbytery, um, with our clergy, and with the ministry and personnel committee. So they are, the clergy and ministry and personnel committee are not necessarily a part of this gathering. So please mark your calendars. The first Thursday in December, the 7th at 6.30 p.m. Thank you. Good morning. Guess what? I am not asking you to buy tickets this morning. In fact, I'm giving tickets away free. We have some tickets left for the John Gracie Christmas show on Friday night, December 1st at 7 p.m. We also have some tickets left for the Don Fraser show a Christmas to Remember on Saturday night, December 2nd at 7 p.m. The tickets are free, but you are expected to make a donation to the Salvation Army Kettle Campaign at the night of the performance. I will have the tickets for distribution after the service at the Richmond Street door. And this is your last chance to get a ticket as any left over are supposed to go back to City Hall in the morning. John Inman will be giving out tickets after the service for the Salvation Army Turkey Dinner on Saturday, December 9th, here in the gym. These tickets are free, but you are expected to make a donation to the Salvation Army Kettle program that night. Thank you very much. Thanks. Now I invite Emery to light the Christ candle. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. Know that the Holy One is God. We are God's people. Worship the Holy One with gladness. 
Enter God's gates with thanksgiving and God's courts with praise. For God is good, God's steadfast love endures forever, and God's faithfulness to all generations. Our opening hymn is found in Voices United at number 603. Let us join our voices together in In Loving Partnership We Come. Let us pray. Gracious God, we long to know you better. Open our minds to recognize your presence. Open our hearts to receive you fully. Prepare us to follow your way of justice in the reality of God with us, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to remain seated for the singing of our next hymn, Voices United, number 605, Jesus, Teacher Brave and Bold. And any children who may still be here in the sanctuary, I invite you to come with Emery and myself to the upper hall for the rehearsal for White Gift Pageant next Sunday morning.
I'd invite you to join with me in the prayer of confession as it's found on your screens. Let us join together in prayer. Loving God, too often we overlook the needs of people around us while we proclaim our devotion to you. We could do so much more to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, welcome the stranger, and heal the sick. We fail to see how our prison system diminishes the humanity of all of us, how poverty leaves children without coats, how legal obstructs keep the strangers at a distance. Open our eyes to see your presence in every person and to respond to their needs so that we may be rightly called by your name. Amen. God continually searches us out. Seeking through, speaking through Ezekiel, God said, As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered. God reaches out to us, longing to bring us closer. So hear this good news. We are given freedom and new life in God's unending love to each of us. Amen. So let it be. Now this time we have a duet by um, uh, Jeannie and Gordon and uh, Amazing Grace. So we look forward to uh, uh, these two wonderful people sharing their gift of music. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my, my heart, heart to fear, fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious! That grace appeared the hour I first believed through many dangers, toils, and snares. I have already come. His grace that taught me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first began. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch 
like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Our Old Testament uh, lesson this morning is taken from selected verses of Ezekiel. For thus says the Holy One, I myself will search for my sheep, and I will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them to their own land, and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Holy One. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed. I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Holy One to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed the flank and the shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged. I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Most High, have spoken. And our response of psalm this morning is Psalm 100. It's found on the screen and also in Voices United, page 824. And Don and the choir will lead us in the response. <clears throat> Shout to God, all the earth. Come before God with laughter. To the shepherd who tends us like sheep. Come to God's gates with thanks. Praise and bless God's name. You are always gracious. And faithful each after each.
Let us continue to listen for that still small voice of God as I share with you through our storyteller that we've come to know as Matthew. Let us listen to these words. When the Sovereign One comes in glory and all the angels with Him, then He will sit on the throne of glory. All the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate people one from another as, sheep, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And He will put the sheep at His right hand and the goats at His left. Then the Sovereign One will say to those seated at the right hand, Come, you that are blessed by God, inherit the realm prepared for you from the foundations of the earth. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, When was it that we saw you hungry, and gave you food, or thirsty, and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger, and welcomed you, or naked, and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick, or in prison, and visited with you? And the Sovereign One will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then the Sovereign One will say to those seated at the left, You are accursed. Depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Sovereign One, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not care for you? And the Sovereign One answered them, saying, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. For the Word of God in Scripture, for the Word of God among us, and for the Word of God within us. Amen.
Will you join me in the moment of prayer? Oh God, sometimes words are like lumps of clay. Thoughts are like lumps of clay. And we ask, oh God, today that as I speak and share some words and thoughts, that you, like a potter, will take them and make something of them in the minds and the hearts of those who listen. We ask this in the name of an ever-present and an ever-loving and an ever-caring God. Amen. Linus, in Charles Schultz's cartoon, Peanuts, watches television. And his big sister Lucy comes to him and says, I don't want to watch that program. I want to watch my program. Now Linus wants to be left alone. And he says, all right, okay. I'll go upstairs and I'll listen to the radio. And Lucy follows him up the stairs and as Linus sits down near the radio, she growls, I don't want to listen to that program. I want to listen to my program. Linus stares at her and sighs, Fine, I'll go to the next room and play a few records. Lucy, right behind him, yells, I don't want to listen to these records. I want to listen to my records. Exacerbated, Linus turns toward the door and announces, okay, I'll go outside and I'll look at the stars for a while. And once again, Lucy follows him and shouts, I don't want to look at those stars. I want to look at my... And this is when she stops, glares at her little brother, sighs loudly, stomps away. Lucy's like a fish out of water. As she finished her sentence, I want to look at my stars, she would have looked foolish. The Peanuts vignette illustrates, I think, two kinds of faith. Lucy's is a small faith which essentially says, I believe in me, and there's nothing else but me. I'm the center of the universe. It's all about me and mine. Linus faith, I think, is a little wider and more mature as he points his big sister toward the vast expanse of the skies and the stars which neither he nor uh, his sister can ever call their own. It's beyond him, beyond her. And likewise, the gospel reading for today tells us about two sorts of faith from which folk, I think, sometimes operate, or it's in the operation mode. It is a story from Matthew 25, often referred to as the last judgment. Isn't that a sort of warm, cuddly thing to be, uh, be doing uh, just as we begin in the next couple of weeks, Advent? And I guess that's where the rub for me in this story is. It doesn't seem, the story doesn't seem to fit the image or the stories of Jesus in the rest of the gospel as, a, as an itinerant preacher of forgiveness, of peace, and of joy. It just doesn't seem to mesh for me here. I know the church for ages has developed a very complex understanding and has taken great lengths to preach from a few biblical texts which accent and highlight hellfire and eternal punishment. These texts, however, are far 
and, and there are not many of them there in the Bible. Asked in an interview whether she thought there was a hell, Reverend Elizabeth Eaton, and she's a, a, a bishop in the Evangelical Lutheran Church, and she said, there may be a hell, but I think it's empty. And then she went on to quote from John's Gospel, which says, And I, when I am lifted up from earth, will draw all people to myself. The text today seems to present to us a sense of dualism. And it's funny how that's in our world. It's either or all the time. There's no, if you're in the gray area in between, that's bad. That's sort of your wishy-washy. But if you're firmly on this side or firmly on this side, then you've got something going. Maybe fists up as you go at each other from either side and fight for your ideals. Either you're going to heaven or you're going to hell. The story we have in Matthew certainly has a splattering of that dualistic view, both in the sheep and goats image, the sheep on one side, the goats on the other side. There's the eternal punishment and eternal life. There's the righteous and the accused. I suspect there's a lot in between as well, but we don't get into that. But did you notice that intermingled and mashed in with that story, there is that non-dualistic mode, mode that encourages universal compassion. Just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. In the end, it suggested that there is only one valid answer left. And that's love. It's not either or. It's not saying you're going here or going there. It's a sense of care and respect and love that this passage focuses upon. It's interesting that the church has used this passage to hammer people over the head and saying, you either smarten up and if you're not good, then guess where you're going? And if you're good, well, you're going to be with me. <laughs> Our love toward the least of these addresses God's own needs. To properly love God is to love everyone in God's creation and everything in God's creation. What ultimately counts is not what we believe about God, my gosh, if we were all about what we believed about God, then you know what? We'd be even more fractured. And I guess it does cause fractures. Orthodoxy, it's called in churchy words. But I think it's more important what we do for God's sisters and brothers. Churchy word, orthopraxy. Our actions. You've heard it said, you know what? Your actions speak louder than words. And I would much prefer someone whose actions speak louder than words than babbling off uh, without a whole lot. And I think there's a hymn out there, a song, they know we are Christians by our love. Where love is inhibited, where love is not shared, when we develop good schemes to identify who's in and who's out, who's going to heaven and who's going to hell, who's good and who's bad, where love is not present to all, we have a sure recipe for spiritual death. Where love flourishes, on the other hand, I'm being a little dualistic here, aren't I? The good news of God is alive. Strangers are welcomed. Enemies are loved. The hungry are fed. The sick are healed. The good news reaches those in captivity and spirituality, life, lives and thrives. You see, what I think of this lesson, the scripture that we read this morning, a very powerful gospel text, it's not about fear. And it's been used with fear. But it's about love. 
If we conform our lives to the world around us, we will fail. But if we boldly embody the life of Christ and those teachings in which we see in the Gospels of the Christ, the ways of Christ, we will begin to love all creation as one, as God loves us. As a community committed to, to not leaving anyone behind, the people of God are at cross purposes in more ways than one with our current fear-based official culture which continually, restlessly concocts new ways of being able to label whole groups of people as enemies. Now you might say, well that's, Greg, you're hearing that with the good president from the United States and the things that are happening down south of the border. And yet I'm hearing that. But you know, I, you know, I also hear it in conversations that I have on this gentle island as we hear conversations about those people, as we hear conversations about who are the enemies out there. It's happening here, and it's insidious how it happens. But I think being very aware of who we are and being aware of the God in we worship, I think that we need to be very careful. We are contented with the, we are contending, I think, with agents of vicious power. Whenever we stand up to find justice for those pushed to the margins, but even though in these testing hours we will be tempted to retreat, but I think in the stories of Jesus we move forward. Jesus bids us see his face in the face of each person who is being labeled who is being harassed, who is being excluded, who is being insulted, who is being hurt, or who is being deported. Those with a Lucy faith are too fearful to do this. But those with a Linus faith, I think, are ready. Love is the lesson. Love, in the end, is all that counts. Love, in the end, is really all that lasts. So let it be. Amen. Our hymn is... Uh, in, uh, in Voices United 600, When I Needed a Neighbor. And uh, Gordon is going to be our soloist, I think, for that one. Yeah, so Gordon is going to sing the first verse, and then we'll chime in with the rest of the, uh, of the hymn. So I, if you're able, I would invite you to stand for this hymn. <laughs>
Our minute uh, for mission story this morning is an interesting one. It's about midwives, or as they refer to as birth attendants in East Africa. 494 women from across Tanzania, East Africa, and 16 training sessions in collaboration with the Tanzanian Ministry of Health. These are the latest totals for training traditional birth attendants or midwives reported by Mission and Service Partner, the Morogoro Women's Training Center. The collaboration, which is made possible with the support of United Church Women, is part of an overall strategy to reduce maternal and infant mortality rates in Tanzania. The women have been selected and named by their community and range in age from their early 20s to over 70. Some have worked as traditional birth attendants for decades. Some completed high school, others some grades of elementary school, and a few have never attended school at all. But all have developed a wide range of skills on the job and have faced many challenges in the course of their career. Some live close to a health clinic or hospital where they can readily refer their high-risk cases. Yet others live many kilometers from the closest medical center, having to navigate over difficult and sometimes impassable terrain. One woman in particular they mention, Molen Abdul, has been delivering babies for 47 years. She welcomes the additional training and says, this work is very important to me. It's like it keeps the clock of life ticking. We sing thanksgiving that Mission and Service is helping to improve the health of women and babies in Tanzania. If Mission and Service is already a regular part of your giving, thank you. And if you've not yet given to Mission and Service, please consider making it a regular part of your life of faith. In all our Mission and Service giving with a willing heart, we sing thanksgiving to God. We give as we are able. We give as we are called. Your morning offering will now be received.
that I share together in the, uh, the offertory prayer. God of abundance, we give these offerings of money as our commitment to give back to you and to care for your people. Let our giving remind us to see Christ all around us. Use our offerings of money and of our lives for ministry to your purposes. Amen. Please be seated. Let us uh, join in a moment of prayer. Creator and loving God, we gather this day very aware of your loving arms and your hands that hold this great planet and the universe and the vast expanse of the galaxies in your hands and in your love. As, O oh God, all creation is held in love and care, may we be so inspired, may we be so enlightened, may we be so moved to share that love and that care with all people throughout our world, within our communities, within our families, within our lives. Be with us this day. Be with us as we venture into yet another week be with us as we sit at places where we work or stand at places where we work. Be with us in those places where we go for enjoyment, go to eat, go to be with significant people in our lives. And may those places and those conversations be holy ground. And may your presence be known, O God, through the ways in which we, who confess to be people of the way, the ways in which we care, love, and share. We ask, O oh God, that you, and we know that you are, continue to surround and be with all people this day who are struggling. We remember those who are in hospital, those who find it hard to make ends meet. And as we draw closer to Christmas, O oh God, it's sometimes a very, very, very difficult time for people. And we ask that as we go and move through Advent, may it not be only a preparation for Christmas Day, but preparing ourselves and our hearts for a presence that is with us through the times of sorrow, the times of loss, the times of struggle, the times of confusion. Be with each of us as we go forth this day, and may we always be keenly aware we never walk alone. You are always with us. Amen and amen. Our concluding hymn is uh, found on the back of your bulletin, uh, and it's also on the screen as well, but for those who like the music, it's on the back, or in, in your bulletin, I think it's maybe not on the back. It is in your bulletin somewhere. <laughs> uh, sometimes we wait expecting God. Uh, so I'd invite you to stand if you're able and let us join in the singing of this hymn.
And now may God give you wisdom and revelation. May the eyes of your heart be enlightened. May you know the hope to which God has called you, and may the blessings of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer go with you this day and forevermore. So let it be. Amen.